Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Diana and the Book Hunt. I'm saying morning because it's morning for me, but good afternoon or good evening if you're watching this at a different time. I am going to be wrapping up the month of June. Today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I managed to finish in the later part of June. I already have a video up for the first part of the month, so the books that I read between the 1st and the 15th. I'm going to link it up in the cards as per usual if you want to check it out. And then I'm going to be talking about interesting reads. A couple of them were real doozies, a couple of them were disappointments, a couple of them I really really highly enjoyed. And what I want to mention here is that for the first time ever, I think, in the history of my channel, I managed to finish almost all of the books that I had placed on my June TBR. I actually posted the June TBR video, I'm going to link that up in the cards as well if you want to see it, where I think I talked about 10 books. And I think I read nine, no, actually I read eight out of 10 books. And then the ninth that I read is by the author that I wanted to read something by, but I mixed up the books. So I'm counting that as a win actually. But yeah, essentially I'm asking myself, who am I? Who am I at this time that I managed to finish all of these books? I typically don't tend to stick to a TBR because I'm very much a mood reader and it's been very interesting to see that I think the thing is, while I usually am excited about all of the books that I put on my TBR, right? It's not that I'm not excited about the books that I'm wanting to read. All of them are in my want to read list. The ones that I put on this specific list were really highly anticipated reads for me, so I think I just did a good job of making a list that I was able to stick to. So I'm hoping that I can make more of these videos where I'm going to stick to the TBR that I made for myself. So yeah, I'm just going to talk about all of these books. It's I think eight books that I managed to finish in the later part of June. I have to say that I've slowed down my reading because the European Championship of Football has started and it's something that I really enjoy to watch. So in the evenings I've been watching a lot of football. I have not really read a lot, so I've kind of slowed down my reading. Anyway, I'm going to start off with the first book that was definitely one that is not worth mentioning. I did not enjoy this book. The book is called Whiskey Business by Elliot Fletcher. And it's one that features a heroine who is an actress. She was from this uh, Scottish small town, but she moved, I think, to London to pursue her career. And then something happened. So one of her relatives passed away and she decides to go back to her small town because she has been left with this kind of mansion or I don't know what to call it like a, like a house and then land and also a whiskey distillery that is in that specific uh, plot of land and she comes across a childhood friend of hers who actually had become like the caretaker for her grandfather and he was really close to him and they struck up a deal that he was going to be left the distillery if he pays him a certain amount of money and then the hero and heroine, while they were childhood friends, they left off their relationship in a very bad place when she left. So there is this kind of second chance, grumpy, not really sunshine, she's not the most sunshiny kind of character, but he's definitely a grump or a recluse more so. And I don't know, I just did not vibe with this book. It was so boring. I really was dozing off and kind of contemplated dnfing the book on several occasions but at a certain point i was like maybe i should not be looking forward to a lot of action or a lot of plot development but just focus on the characters but the characters weren't all that exciting either so i just did not enjoy this book unfortunately i gave it two stars the next book I picked up is one by one of my all-time favorite authors, Abby Jimenez. I'm working through the backlist of this author. It's The Friend Zone. I think it's the first book that released by this author, if I'm not mistaken. And I know that there's a big divide on how people perceive this book, specifically because of the topics that are handled within this book. And I can understand that this may be uh, a triggering read for certain readers and I can fully understand that not everyone is going to enjoy this book. For me, 
I think that Abby is just, she's just a wonderful writer. She has a way with words. Her books are like catnip for me. I will enjoy anything she writes, I think, and I really enjoy this book. The book centers on our heroine who is going to be organizing wedding activities for her best friend who is getting married and she is going to be organizing these activities with the best man and the best man they actually have an encounter before they find out that they're part of the same wedding that kind of leaves them antagonizing each other a little bit so they have this neat cute that involves a little bit of a, a car crash situation let's leave it off at that and from that point on they have banter they have this obvious attraction to one another and they get to know each other first on a front level because they do agree that they need to work on and prioritize their friends first and then um, as they become friends they also develop a chemistry and also feelings for each other and the difficult part within this book and if you haven't read this book and you don't want to be spoiled maybe you can skip ahead uh, is that the heroine has a medical condition that prevents her from having children actually it's not really mentioned that she can't have children but with her condition they tell her that it's going to be very difficult to have children and especially because she has very painful periods and they are very often she decides that she wants to have her uterus taken out and at the same time the hero is someone who is looking forward to becoming a father he very much wants a very big family a big household with plenty of children and the heroine immediately decides that they should not be together because she is not going to be the person who will be able to give him the future that he wants so essentially this is the conflict within the book and the conflict that has a lot of people divided on how the book progresses and especially how it ends and then also there is a very big um, incident that happens at the end of the book that also has a lot of people divided on how it was used as uh, maybe a plot device. I can see how that can be perceived that way, but this incident that I don't want to mention because it's a big spoiler, um, this incident kind of is a very good se segue into the second book because the second book is actually if you read the acknowledgements and the afterword by Abby Jimenez she explains that um, the second book that she wrote is one that is very close to her because it features the story of a friend of hers and she definitely she, she, she hasn't used it as a plot device just to have this story work she has used a real life situation into the book that she wants to see how someone's life will, will play out after such an incident. So I really appreciated that. I can imagine that it's not going to be for everyone. I can imagine that people were really, really upset by it. But for me, I think that it was done really well. I really enjoyed it. I was hooked from the first page. I could not put it down. And Abby Jimenez just has a wonderful way of writing. Uh, the connection between her characters feel very genuine, like they're real people who have a real connection. So for me, this one was a definite hit. I give it four and a half stars. The next book is unfortunately going to be one of my biggest disappointments of the year. It's The Rom Commerce, a new release by Catherine Center. I really enjoyed uh, The Bodyguard and Hello Stranger by this author. I read them back at the end of 2023 and I gave them four and a half to five stars. I was really, really fascinated by the writing style of the author. It really worked for me. So I was really looking forward to the new release, especially because it features writers of screenplays. I really tend to enjoy stories that feature filmmaking. So screenwriting, filmmaking, it just works for me. And I was just so looking forward to this one and it was such a disappointment unfortunately I really do hope that if people pick it up and enjoy it that they're going to put out reviews that will kind of convince me to rethink my position but I don't think that that's going to happen so let me tell you a bit about the book so you can see why it didn't work for me the book centers on our heroine who is not a well-known name within the filmmaking industry she has this agent who used to be in a relationship with her but now isn't and they're just friendly now and he finds an opportunity for her 
to work on a screenplay that is a rom-com with her idol within the screenwriting industry. It's this very big name guy who needs to write this rom-com if he wants to continue on to release another work of his that he's very passionate about. He has never written a rom-com and he sucks at it. And that's why she gets hired to help him out because she is someone who used to work on this television show that was very popular that was within that genre. So they have to have this meeting together and he says some pretty awful things about her that she overhears and she very quickly finds out that indeed you should not meet your idols because it's really horrible to see when they're really not that good of a person and honestly the hero just doesn't redeem himself for me within this book he continues on to make very rude and very uncomfortable remarks and honestly the whole book really centers on not the romance and not the rom-com either. I, I, I did not find this romantic. I did not find this funny. I did not find that they were writing something romantic or funny. The end had this cute gesture by the hero that could be perceived as romantic. But for me, by that time, I was just lost on it. I, I, I could not find it credible. I could not find the connection to be built between the two characters. So for me, it just didn't make sense how he fell in love with her when he was so horrible to her in the first place. So for me, unfortunately, this was, this was really a big miss. The next book that I read was one that I picked up on a whim and I really enjoyed it. The book is by Maddie Cleese and it's called Sunrise with the Silver Surfers. This book features a heroine who is in her 60s, if I'm not mistaken. She has recently found out that her husband of many years has had an affair and actually his mistress has become pregnant. So she decides that it's game over for them. She gets a divorce. They have a son who is already, I think, 20 something years old, 24, 25. So she is someone who is ready to kind of start her new life because she doesn't have to take care of a husband and a child anymore. She can do whatever she wants. She's originally from Australia and she still has family in Australia. So she decides that she's going to go from Britain to Australia to do this reacquainting herself back with her culture and her family. And she gets on this flight and she meets this guy and they hit it off. They have this wonderful conversation together. And when she gets off of the plane, she finds out that he's actually her sister's partner, his brother. And he doesn't have a very good relationship with said brother. So it's very um, interesting for her to see that the person that she saw on the plane is very different from the person that she's seeing when he's inter interacting with his family. So when she gets to Australia, she has some very interesting conversations and uh, gatherings with her family. She finds out that her aunt and uncle are joining this silver surfer club of retired people who are moving with like campers and uh, caravans over uh, throughout Australia. And essentially she finds out that her aunt and uncle need some help because her uncle, I think he fell ill or he broke his foot or something like that. And they needed help for her to go and get this camper back to Sydney, I think. And the hero volunteers to accompany her so she doesn't go alone. So they go on this road trip throughout Australia to get this camper back to Sydney. Essentially, this kind of had like a hallmarky feel to it, which is not a bad thing. It was definitely uh, really uh, cute and kind of considerate of the age demographic that they're in. Uh, there was some spice within this book, but not overtly like spicy. And it was just very much interesting for me to see how in this situation the heroine is going to discover back her own identity through... Uh, viewing herself in a completely different light in a completely different location that she has been living in uh, for very many years. So I really, really enjoyed this one. I give this one three and a half stars. The next book is a new release that is my only five star read in the later part of June. It was a hot, hot, spicy time. 
It's Honey Cut by Sierra Simone. This actually is the second full length novel within the Lioness series. I have to say that you definitely need to read the prequel novella. And then I think that one is called Salt in the Wound. And then the first book within the Lioness series is Salt Kiss. And then this one follows up where the first book left off. So you definitely need to read those so that you can get caught up on the characters and what their dynamic is between them when, once this book starts. This book is essentially kind of a loose retelling of the uh, story of Tristan and Isolde. And it's a book that features a relationship between three people. We've got Mark, Tristan and Isolde. Tristan is Mark's bodyguard, while Mark is due to be married to Isolde. And Mark is someone who is working. Uh, he actually owns this very elite sex club that deals in currency of secrets. So it's a very interesting, politically motivated, a very much spice focused, very much spice focused book. But just having read the first two so the novella and the first novel and then continuing on their relationship it's just so angsty so messy there is there is cheating involved in this book and there's just a lot going on and you're on your toes the whole time and you want to see how their kind of toxic dynamic is going to play out and I really, really enjoyed this one. I was in for the drama and for the spice in this one. It was really, really good. The next book that I read is another book that I would say is a bit of a disappointment. Not the biggest kind of disappointment, but still I just had expectations that I would love it and would give it five stars, but I, unfortunately I didn't. It's the new release by Ashley Poston. It's a novel love story. This one features a heroine that is very much a reader. She is a teacher and she loves to read romance. She has this very favorite series of hers that uh, she has been discussing with her book club and her best friend and she's kind of living for that series. And then she has her very own traumatic experience with love. She used to be in a very committed relationship. She was supposed to get married and she was left essentially almost at the altar uh, by her fiance. So she has very much kind of closed herself off from wanting to be in a relationship. And she has a yearly retreat that she does with her friends and book club uh, every year. But this year she has to go on her own because everyone has other commitments. Once she heads out to this place where she's going to have this retreat, there is this very huge storm that occurs and she kind of gets lost and she enters this very small town that essentially she finds out is the small town that is featured in the favorite series that she has been loving all these years. And she finds out that all her favorite characters are living there. And one interesting caveat here is that the author of this book series has passed away tragically. So it, it feels like the characters within the small town are all stuck because their story just doesn't continue. So the premise of this book is wonderful. I really found that Ashley Poston again finds this very original kind of plot line that she can work with and she has this amazing ability of creating little magical parts within her plots that kind of intrigue you and keep you curious about what is going to happen and that still occurs within this one. I really really highly enjoyed that part of the book. What didn't work for me again here is the romance. The hero within this book is the only character within the small town that she doesn't know from the books and he's kind of an enigma to her and because she goes into the small town when there is a storm she almost runs him over so they start off on not the best kind of footing and then um, she's kind of curious about who he is. She's wondering is he someone that the author was writing the next book about and she doesn't know him because she has never read about him or what is his deal essentially and I from my side as a reader I very early on predicted who he is and that kind of probably spoiled a little bit of the fun or the kind of romantic relationship for me and then the second thing is that for me because the hero was kind of antagonistic towards the heroine 
um, the turning point of him actually catching feelings for her, I didn't get that. I, I didn't feel when he actually started to like her and why he started to like her. What was the turning point for him? I did not catch that. So the whole romance between them felt a bit incredible to me. It felt a bit um, kind of not forced, but just not genuine. So I just did not buy the romance as much as I wanted to. I really, I was very much comparing this book. I was really struggling with the rating, basically. I was thinking, should I give it three stars? Should I give it four stars? Because I really did enjoy the idea and the way that it was written. And a lot of things within the book really were wonderful. It's just the romance that didn't work for me. So I was really struggling to see how I should rate it. But then I was thinking that this book really reminded me of Book Lovers by Emily Henry. And that is my least favorite book by Emily Henry. I did not enjoy the whole aspect of how the heroine's favorite written town was kind of executed. I don't know how to say it. And in this book, that part was really, really well done. Really, really well done. And I, I was thinking if I have to compare it to Book Lovers, Book Lovers that I gave three stars to, um, I think this one deserves a higher rating. So I gave this one three and a half stars, but I rounded it up to four because it definitely, in my opinion, was a better book than Book Lovers. But again, having in my mind that I've given the last two books by this author that I've read five stars and I really had high expectations of this one, it was unfortunately a bit of a disappointment. The next book that I read is Loving Romeo by Laura Pavlov. I had not read a Laura Pavlov book before and I'm very happy that I've started with this one because I really highly enjoyed it. This one is currently, I think, very hyped on uh, Bookstagram, BookTok, Booktube and it's with very good reason. It's a very enjoyable romance. The book centers on a hero who has this uh, boxing gym or actually a gym and he used to be a boxer and he's getting very antagonized by this boxer who wants to have this match with him. Our hero, Romeo, he is retired. He doesn't want to actually fight, but he really gets provoked into going to that fight. And then the heroine, she is someone who comes from this very prominent family within the small town that they live in. And the hero hates her guts because of the family that she's a part of. He has a history with them. She opens up this, uh, it's like a bakery or this kind of food shop. She really wants to make a good impression on him. So she kind of invites him to uh, have these free drinks so that he can get to know her business and maybe become a frequent customer but he is really grumpy with her and he kind of is very reluctant into having any kind of relationship with her because of the family that she's a part of but the more that he gets to know her the more that he sees that she has nothing to do with her family and the way that they've treated him in the past and he slowly but surely falls in love with her it's a very much organic kind of growth of a relationship and that is what I enjoyed it was really focusing on the romance and then as a side note her family and their issues and then the way that his past ties into her family as well and then also the side note of the fight it was just a very well-built romance I really highly enjoyed it I give it four stars the next book that I read is where we started by Ashley Munoz it's the first book within a more motorcycle club series and I have to say that I have not read one of those in very many years I think the last one that I read was by Gianna Darling um, it's the first book within her fallen men series that I did not enjoy I know I'm in the minority here everyone loves that series but I read the first book it was not it for me so I did not continue and then, I don't know, I just kind of never felt the need to pick up another one because I just maybe had a bad experience with that one. But then this one kind of spoke to me, so I decided to pick it up and I really highly enjoyed it. I gave this one four stars as well and I'm going to be continuing on with the series. Within this book, we've got the heroine who is the daughter of a motorcycle club president. And she definitely doesn't want to be a part of that world. She has seen it all uh, ever since she was a child. She has seen too many things that she doesn't want to be a part of. 
And then when she was a child, she formed a relationship with this boy in this tree house when she was running away from all the noise at the club. And they formed this very cute and very wholesome friendship together. And then it evolved into a relationship when they were teenagers. So they were very much in love. And her only kind of request from him is that he doesn't join the club. And then one day something happens um, that makes him make the decision to become a club member. And that's when their relationship started to kind of dissolve because he broke his promise to her and he started to become something that she didn't want to see him become. So essentially when they were in their teenage years, they had a relationship, they broke up, she moved away and then her father passes away. So she goes back for the funeral and she finds out that this guy was, he is now the president of the motorcycle club. He was heartbroken by her decision so he kind of loves but hates her at the same time and she still has feelings for him but she doesn't see how they could make a relationship work when he's everything that she doesn't want to be with. So this was very much a very intriguing and very much a dynamic and angsty read so I really really enjoyed it and I'm definitely continuing on with the series. So my friends, these were all the reads that I managed to finish in the month of June. I'm looking forward to all the new books that I'm getting to pick up in the month of July. I'm in the mood for very many different things. So I'm picking up very many different books and you're going to hear all about them in a couple of weeks time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, put a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. Happy reading. Take care and bye-bye.